without a doubt, one of the hottest restaurants in New York City right now is Teresi. It's part of the major food group, which is the same restaurant group that's given us Carbone, and I just had to check it out. It's an absolutely beautiful day here in New York City, albeit a very hot one. Summer is certainly here. Right now I'm relaxing right along the Hudson River here and enjoying the wonderful sights, but earlier in the day I had a very good lunch at one of the most popular restaurants in the entire city right now. I'm talking about Teresi. Part of the reason why Teresi is just so hot right now is it's because it's a major food group restaurant. This is the same restaurant group that's given us the ultra popular and extremely hard to get into Carbone. And just like Carbone, Teresi is also an Italian restaurant. Now I really enjoyed eating at Carbone. The food was great, the service was excellent, and the whole overall experience was fantastic, albeit the restaurant was overpriced. But to me, Teresi is just a bit more exciting. While Carbone has those Italian American classics and staples, Teresi seems more innovative, more experimental, and that has certainly captured my interest. And so far, the restaurant seems like it's a big hit. The New York Times bestowed a three-star review on the establishment and online with platforms like Google Reviews and Yelp, people have generally seemed to have had great experiences at the restaurant. Unfortunately, and just like Carbone, getting a reservation at Teresi is quite the feat. But unlike Carbone, Teresi has a bar, which allows the restaurant to accept walk-ins. Yeah, Carbone is always booked. It amuses me to hear people think that they can just walk right into the restaurant and get a table. Even George Clooney, when he wanted to go to Carbone, couldn't get a table without a reservation. While I unfortunately couldn't get a reservation to Teresi, I had no problem showing up to the restaurant this afternoon and getting a seat at the bar, and I enjoyed a very nice lunch. Teresi is located on the edge of Nolita, inside the iconic Puck Building along Houston Street. The building used to be the home of Puck Magazine, which gave the structure its name. In fact, Teresi pays tribute to this history, with framed covers of the publication hung in their washrooms. Inside, there's no doubt about it, Teresi is a beautiful restaurant. The design is simply stunning, from the high walls and brick ceilings to the marble top bar. It's a restaurant that exudes class, from the minute details like the gold-plated lights to the servers dressed in tuxedo jackets and bow ties. It's the type of atmosphere that helps justify some of the establishment's high prices because it is expensive. Diving into the menu by Chef Rich Teresi, there's a decent selection for lunch, but there's no doubt about it, the dinner menu is far more robust. However, there is also an unlisted special rotating sandwich that can only be obtained during lunch service. After ordering, I felt that I had to wait a bit too long for my first course, which took over 20 minutes to be presented. But thankfully, it was a great dish. It was a tortellini pomodoro. In terms of the portion size, I thought it was fair. It's not massive nor too small. For comparison, all the pasta courses at Teresi were noticeably larger than the entree pastas that I had at the Michelin-starred restaurant Resdora in the Flatiron District. In terms of flavor, my pasta checked every box. The tortellini were perfectly cooked, little pillows stuffed with ricotta on top of an incredibly delicious and chunky tomato sauce. In a 2023 Forbes article, Chef Rich Teresi conversed about the tortellini, saying, quote, It sounds like it would be a boring dish, but when people eat it, it smacks them. Honestly, these dishes take the most time because they're so pervasive and made in so many restaurants around the country, and we have to hit it so perfectly to get that effect. In that same spirit of the tortellini, I was reminded of one of Carbone's most famous offerings, the spicy rigatoni vodka pasta, which is another dish commonly found in Italian restaurants. The thing with those pastas is that while they're both simple and straightforward, they're done to absolute perfection. My lunch was certainly off to a great start. With my placemat and silverware reset, it was time for the next course, which was a sandwich special, a lamb gyro, which I believe came with tzatziki sauce and fermented harissa. It wasn't very big. While my bartender stated that it was a full-size sandwich, to me that would only hold true if this course was meant for children. I also thought that it was overpriced, as it set me back $29. But at least it was a very tasty sandwich. The lamb had good flavor and the bread was thin and crispy, but the sandwich truly became complete with the addition of both sauces. They each provided a nice creaminess, while the harissa lent a touch of spice. The sandwiches are in fact a nod to both Rich Teresi's and Mario Carbone's origins with the restaurant that really put the pair on the map, Teresi Italian Specialties. That restaurant closed right at the end of 2014. In fact, the location is just a block away from the current establishment. 
By day, Teresi Italian Specialties operated as a deli selling sandwiches, while at night a $50 prefix menu was offered. Elements of the former space live on, as the eatery's old sign is affixed right outside Teresi's entrance, and downstairs, near the bathrooms, is the deli's old menu. I really enjoyed my sandwich and appreciated the reference to the old restaurant. Transitioning to dessert, I was given a complimentary lemon Italian ice. I love the way it was presented, in a classic disposable paper cup alluding to summer and fun, but the fact it came on a gleaming silver tray reminded me that I was still in a fine dining establishment. The ice was tasty and refreshing with a strong lemon flavor. It was definitely a nice treat. For dessert, I got what is quickly becoming one of the restaurant's signatures, the affogato. But it's not your typical affogato. Instead of hot espresso, there's espresso granita on top of vanilla ice cream, a mascarpone mousse, and hot fudge. I really enjoyed the dish, but to me, it's simply not an affogato. The spirit of the dessert is certainly there, but switching from hot espresso to frozen espresso makes for a very different creation. But it's still a good creation. The granita had a strong espresso flavor, while the ice cream and mascarpone lent a pleasing level of richness to the dish. It was also a pretty sizable dessert. I feel like a couple could even share it if they're not too hungry. For me, it was a nice ending to a very satisfying meal at Cherisi, but it certainly wasn't cheap. My bill came to $81.65, and with my tip, I spent just under $100 for my lunch. But despite the price, I had an overall fantastic experience. So that was immensely satisfying. I had a great overall positive experience at the restaurant. There's no doubt about it, the restaurant was beautiful, and the service is fantastic. Although I did feel that some of the food could have come out a bit quicker, but that's just a small complaint. And everything I ate was really good. I just wish I could have tried more. I mean, there's only so much I could fit in my stomach, and my wallet only is so deep. Yeah, it is a bit expensive, but uh, it doesn't seem as overpriced as Carbone, but it's not cheap either. And unlike Carbone, Teresi's menu is just more exciting to me. The food they have on there just seems more unique. Now, I love Carbone, and I would love to go back there again, but if I had to choose between the two, between Carbone and Teresi, I'd probably go with Teresi, just because their menu is just so much more interesting. In summation, the major food group has another winner on their hands. Teresi seems to be a great restaurant. I've really enjoyed my lunch today, and I would love to return.